Hey there, today I'm going to be talking about a controversial topic. I'll probably get a lot of hate for it, but I'm going to recognize there are fanboys on both sides, so, you know, just forget about it. It's, it's you know, whatever. We're going to be talking about AMD and their current state, where they might end up in 2017, and what do they have going for them. Well, there's two miracles currently that could save them, and a, a third other thing that I'm going to talk about. First miracle is their CPU architecture Zen they're coming out with. They're new. It's going to be brand new from the ground up. Lots of improvements and single core performance. This is what's going to save them. Uh, they've had lots of cores in the past, but games don't use a lot of cores, and other programs didn't either. Everyday computing relies a lot on just you know single core raw performance, and that's where Intel excels right now. They're owning AMD. So with this 40% claims IPC improvement, that's what's really going to help AMD with their new CPUs. They're sure they're going to support like 32 cores, but we need to focus on the IPC, and that's what they've done here. It's completely fresh, new, and that's really going to help them. Second, their GPUs, Polaris, coming out. It's going to be a much smaller transistor size, I think 11 or 10 nanometer. Uh, I also should point out Zen is going to be on the FinFET process. I think that's a 11 nanometer, maybe 12, but I think it's... 11 nanometer it's going to be on FinFET I'm not sure exactly the technical details of FinFET but it's going to be much cooler much more efficient so don't worry about that anyway back to Polaris it's also going to be much more efficient there was a demonstration uh, way back a couple months ago where they had Battlefront running and they're claiming that Polaris is two times more efficient uh, performance per watt wise which is incredible that's what we need with AMD GPUs you know everybody's making jokes about how you can cook breakfast on them but that's that's only the reference cards let's face it okay if you get an uh, you know aftermarket it's not so bad anyway so that's Polaris it's it's coming out mid 2016 um, and Zen's coming out late 2016 it'll be interesting I really think these two things are gonna help them why? Because they're completely new. They're not rehashes or improvements upon other architecture. They're going to be new, and that's really what AMD needs. Also, AMD's pretty strong with DirectX 12 to begin with, so Polaris is only going to make that even greater. Sure, NVIDIA's going to fix. You know, NVIDIA was actually getting beat in DirectX 12 by AMD 300 series cards. You know, Pascal's probably going to change that. NVIDIA's going to be on their game, but... I really think AMD is going to help themselves with these improvements. Now, what was that other third thing I talked about? They have a third thing coming out for them, and it's an external graphics solution. Yes, that's right. Uh, AMD has been working on... Let me, let me just... Well, I'll show you here. AMD has been working on an external GPU for laptops. There are millions of you know, ultra-thin notebooks in the U.S. and other laptops, and people who play games on them, but they play small games and would like to have a nicer computer to play heavy PC games on, but they don't. This eGPU solution will make it possible across multiple computers. You know, MSI did this with their laptop, but you can only do it with an MSI laptop. AMD, if they actually pull this off correctly, it will really help them. It can't really hurt them because this isn't a product that they've relied on in the past, so if it doesn't work out so well, it's not like they're going to lose too much. And if it takes off, it's going to help them a lot. This is three things in 2016-17 that's really going to help them out. They're at an all-time low, so let's take a look at some of these stock prices. Oh wait, yeah, before we do that, I should also point out that with DirectX 12, <laughs> you can use both an AMD and an NVIDIA card at once, right? Is, this is something we've always wanted to do. It's incredible. You can do it. <laughs> I don't know the exact, uh, you know, details of it, but if you want to use, you know, here I think it says, oh yeah, an R9 Fury X and a GTX 980 were combined, <laughs> and they garnered the best performance with an average 70 frames a second at uh, 1440p. And it's just I don't know what game they're talking about. So you can use both Nvidia and AMD cards. I think that's amazing. That's something you, I did not expect, but that's pretty awesome. Anyway, back to the stock prices. As you can see, you know, over the past year, AMD is they've gone down. They've done bad. The last five years, they've tanked. They've just tank. done really well here in 2005 when they had some great processors out. Uh, Intel and AMD did really well in, in 2000 because that's when people started buying computers. Anyway, 
look how quickly they went from, you know, $6 a share when Intel started probably taking over them. They come out with some great Athlons. Bam, there they go. Up to like $40 a share. Then they tank. They release Bulldozer, and it brings them up a little bit. We all know how bad Bulldozer was, and it did bring them up a little bit. Uh, some APU action happened here. I think the R9 series came out here, so that helped them a little bit. We're having three things come out. Great. Uh, it should be great. I really think it will be. Zen. It's, uh, it's not going to be a rehash. It's brand new, and they focused. Finally, they focused on single core performance. Yeah, that Zen's coming out. Their new GPUs, Polaris, coming out. And then if they actually do this third other thing with an external GPU solution, which I know people have always wanted, people have would use that because, you know, I have a friend down the street who has a Mac Air and he wanted to game on it. And I'm like, nah, you can't really do that. And he's like, well, can I just buy a graphics card and somehow hook it up? I'm like, no. <laughs> but if AMD pulls this off, you can. All you need is a Thunderbolt, a Thunderbolt 3 port, and that would be amazing. That's something that's easily implemented on a laptop. So three things, I really don't think this is a too far-fetched of an estimate. $14, $13 a share, at least for a little while, I think AMD is going to do pretty well. If you want to buy, it now's the time. They were at $1.72 here, wow. All right, right, right now they're at two thirty, two thirty ish so if you're going to buy, it's very low risk. Why? Because I don't think AMD is going out of business anytime soon. So, you know, you're not going to lose all your money. If you spend $1,000 on shares, you know, you're going to pay, <clears throat> I guess, $2,300. Wait, how, wait, how much is that? Right. Oh, $1,000 worth of shares. Excuse me. So you could buy 420 shares. We'll just say that. <laughs> 420 shares. And if they go up to $8, because Piledriver was terrible. Bulldozer was terrible, and they went up to at least nine, or not at least, uh, at most nine, <laughs> times nine dollars. Bam, what a gain at such a low risk. You could probably lose about five hundred dollars, or gain however much that is, twenty seven hundred eighty dollars. It's incredible. Now, what if Zen is fantastic, and it competes with Intel, Polaris is, it's decent, it's good, and it competes with NVIDIA, even without this third other thing. I really think... You could see your thousand dollar investment going up to you know seventy five hundred bucks, and this is all within a year, guys. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not telling you to go out and buy AMD stock. I'm just saying that I'm gonna do it. And if I get a, a good decent co op this summer and fall, you better believe I'm gonna be putting money into this. I really think. Well, it depends on if if, if they've gone up at that by that point, then I'm not really gonna do it. I'm only gonna buy here where it's very low risk. You know. So anyway, that's that's my two cents about AMD. I really think they're they could come back and at least bring competition back. I'm not going to say they're dominating. They're not going to dominate. They're just going to come back and say, "Hey, I'm still here, and we're we can still come out with decent products, guys." So that's my two cents. I'll give it a like if you like this video. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, feel free to subscribe and have a good day.